If you want to learn how to measure and plot temperatures, build wireless radio controllers, use servos to drive tools, or build weird things like, I don't know, a thermal camera, here you'll learn mechatronics in minutes. The last time we met, we took a break from learning stuff and built something neat. We built a filament meter for our 3D printer. That included a small LCD display, but we never really discussed how to use them. That's what we're going to focus on today. Chances are you've seen a YouTube video that included some type of display. There are several on the market from simple LCD to screens, which are monochrome and only support block characters, like 20 columns by 4 rows. Here's a small monochrome display that can draw graphics, but as you can see, it's really tiny. These full color displays come in various sizes and resolutions, but are generally around a couple of inches in size. Most are limited to 65,000 colors and have resolutions that can range from 128 by 160 up to 320 by 480 pixels. I use either the 2.8 or the 3.5 religiously. One important note, before you jump on Amazon.com and buy a display that boasts pretty graphics, make sure you know what driver chip is being used. Then Google that driver to see if a library exists. Then look at the library and see if it has examples. Trust me, writing display driver code is extremely difficult to do. Your display type will indicate how it's physically connected to your MCU. There are a few different types of connection buses. The first is an I2C data bus and tends to be used for very small displays. It generally has pins named SDA and SCL. As you would imagine, ground to ground and VCC to 3.3 or 5 volts. The MCU knows which device to talk to by means of an address. Here's an example of a configurable address. A very common bus type is the SPI. You will find this type used in displays a few inches in size. Since SPI devices can share the same lines, a chip select is used to let the MCU talk directly to a specific unit. Other pins you'll see are MOSI, MISO, and a DC line. There will probably be other pins such as RESET and LED. Note, there's always exceptions to naming. This display has pins labeled SDA and SCL, but it's not an I2C device. Notice the chip select, RES for reset, and DC pins. This is surely an SPI display. Let's get to wiring and showing you an example with an Arduino. Wiring for Arduinos can be tedious. Most displays are native 3.3 volts, and most Arduinos are 5 volts. This creates a big problem for many displays. Most can't handle the higher voltage properly and ends up giving you weird results or white screens. That means a bunch of resistors to soak up the extra juice. Some displays include an onboard voltage regulator, but that only works for the main power, not the data lines. We'll use a 220 ohm resistor to create a voltage divider for chip select, DC, MOSI, LED, and SCK. You might get by with connecting the reset directly to VCC, but again, use a voltage divider. If you have white screen issues, connect reset to pin 8. Again, through a voltage divider. I'm going to assume that you'll be connecting your display to the dedicated SPI bus on an Arduino. Connect MOSI to pin 11, connect MISO to pin 12, connect SCK to pin 13, chip select to pin 10. Connect DC to pin 9 and connect reset to VCC. Remember, all these pins need to have their voltage cut with a voltage divider. As you expect, ground to ground and VCC to 5V0. It's a good question how long these wires can be. The SPI bus is generally limited to around a dozen centimeters due to the capacitance in the wires. But using CAT5 wires, I've been able to get communications up to several meters. Now that we have our Arduino and SPI display wired up, let's run some sample code. There are several libraries that you can get. After years of experimenting, I found libraries that work and I stick with them. For Arduinos, I'll generally stick with Adafruit libraries. That library comes with an out-of-the-box example called Graphics Test. I recommend running these examples before branching out on your own. Just get these things working first. Quick run through the code. As with any library, include the library first, create the display object, initialize it, and then run through the code. I'm not going to step through each line as this code is just an out-of-the-box example. See how the display fires right up? Well, after an hour of fighting with it, I finally got it to work. I got tons of white screens because I did not have all these voltage dividers in there. Now let's see how to get a TNC going. Same approach. We'll wire the display per the schematic and I'll use the ILI9341 underbar T3 library. We could use the Adafruit library, but this underbar T3 edition runs much faster. Because TNCs are native 3.3 volt devices, they connect directly to your display. Connect DC to pin 9, chip select to pin 10, 
MOSI to pin 11, MISO to pin 12, and SCK to pin 13. Ground to ground, of course. Many TFT LCD manufacturers realize users have 3.3 volt MMCUs and allow bypassing of the onboard regulator. Notice the J1 on the back of the display. It's designed to drop the 5 volts down to 3.3. Just solder that closed if you're using that with a TNC. The methods in this T3 library are nearly identical to the Adafruit, so include the library, display object creation and initialization, and run through the code. If you get a white screen, connect reset to pin 8 and pass pin 8 to the constructor. If you get nothing, make sure MISO is connected to pin 12 and MOSI is connected to pin 11. If I had a dollar for every time I had these lines reversed, I'd have like 7 bucks. As this schematic indicates, you can have multiple SPI devices. Each device has to have its own chip select though. Running these displays side by side, you can see the performance of the TNC 4.0 running at 600 MHz, compared to the Nano, which is clocking in around 12 MHz, I think. Once you have your display up and running, I'm sure your mind will start dreaming. You're going to have to make a tough decision, and that is which MCU do you want to move forward with? Arduinos are cheap and do the basics well, but if you want graphics, custom fonts, and fancy stuff, you're most likely going to run out of memory pretty fast. I've spent months trying to optimize code to squeeze it into the small space of an Arduino. Teensies are much better for large programs, or for ones with graphics and fonts. Let's create a simple program to draw a little bar graph on a display that reports the value of an analog pin. We'll create this program from scratch, so include the library, create the display object, and initialize it. We'll paint the background black to start. We'll print some cute text, and I'll change the font to something fancy and large. Notice the set font calls, and you simply pass in the font name. Make sure you include the .h file above. If you're using the Adafruit libraries, use the ampersand in the set font because their fonts require passing by reference. Most libraries come with some default color settings, but they're not good enough for me. This display library has a color 565 method, so you just pass in the RGB and it will return an unsigned int. Here we'll create a dark blue color and cyan color for our banner. We'll print my favorite text by specifying the cursor's draw location and color. Then in loop, we'll measure analog pin A0 and display its value. We'll draw a few rectangles. We'll print one bar for the actual value itself, and a second rectangle to blank out any previous values. For the argument list, you simply pass in the top, left, width, height, and screen pixels. And, of course, a color. The IDE has a mapping function that will help convert the measured bit value to screen coordinates. For the data rectangle, we will scale the value from 0 to 124 to 0 to 300, which is just less than the screen width of 320. Now we know the width, let's draw it. For the second fill rectangle, left is the computed width plus the initial left, top will be the same 100, width will be 300 minus the width, and height is 20. Upload the code and vary the voltage with the pot. Watch as we vary the input and the bar graph updates. With these types of displays, we're well on our way to creating a graphical temperature meter, speedometer, or whatever. Well, that covers this week's lesson. If you learned something, give me a thumbs up. If you have a tip to share, leave a comment so my subs can learn more. Thanks for watching.